When do you feel the most inspired to sew? For me, the motivation is usually sparked by a change in seasons, a special occasion, an unsuccessful shopping experience, or travel plans. I recently had a burst of sewing inspired by summer travel plans. So I wanted to share what I made and give you a little behind the scenes view of the pattern work that allowed me to skip the sample and cut into the fashion fabric with confidence. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. I teach pattern making and fitting to people who love to sew. You'll find loads of pattern making and fitting tutorials at inhousepatternsstudio.com that will elevate your sewing. I was sure I was going to skip the jumpsuit trend this time around, but I found this pattern in my collection and it seemed to be the perfect piece to take on a summer vacation, as well as an elevated way to stay comfortable throughout the entire summer. As an added bonus, I already had the fabric and notions on hand. Here's a closer look at the pattern and a summary of how I altered the pattern to fit me. Here's the pattern I started with. It is McCall's pattern 6083. Now, as you can see, this pattern was actually copyrighted 2010. So I've definitely had it in my pattern collection for some time, but I thought it was such a great pattern for this summer because what I'm seeing now in the stores and online are a lot more loose fitting, sort of easy fitting styles. And I wanted to sort of capture that for the summer this year. Now you're going to notice here that uh, it is in a sizing category of 4 to 12. So in 2010, this sizing category worked perfectly for me. But now as I'm looking at the body measurements on the pattern here, I can see that I am more landing in between a 16 and an 18, which means that I am going to have to grade this particular pattern up two sizes. Now this is not a problem at all and if you find that you have a pattern in your collection that is smaller than you need, I want you to follow the tutorial that I did for you a while back. I will leave a link to it on this page somewhere because it is going to help you take a pattern that might be too small and be able to grade it up to the next size or even multiple sizes. So what you can do with that information is create any size you need from whatever multi-size pattern that you might have. Now the key here is that the pattern that you're starting with really needs to be a multi-size pattern that's laid up in this graded nest way. This is going to help you determine what the grading is going to be for the next few sizes up or even if you need to grade it down. That's definitely possible to grade it down as well. Now one of the things I did first of course was grade the pattern to a size 16 but I want you to make note of very specific markings on the pattern. You're going to want to know where the bust line is, you're going to want to know where all of your pattern markings are so make sure that you grade those things through as well. You'll want to make sure that you have that information on the size that you create. It's really important that you do that. You'll want to mark where center front is, you'll want to mark where center back is, and you can see here this pattern actually has the waistline marked, and it has the hip line marked as well, but I will tell you right now that I did not use this position for the hip line. I actually used one of the lengthen and shorten lines here, and that's simply because when I did the marking for the hip line position, I found that it was really sitting too low. It's almost in the crotch curve area of the pant and I want it to, to sit higher. I also make sure that I draw in any grain lines that are there. So make sure that you are not missing these really, really important points when you do um, size your pattern differently than what the original pattern is. Now the other thing that I want to note for you is this particular pattern has the crotch line level marked at the back. Now you're gonna see in a minute that 
In fact, the crotch line level really should be marked on the front of the pattern. This level is likely going to be lower than it would be on the front. And so I always mark the front crotch level first and then I apply that to the back. You'll find that most often the crotch level at the back is gonna actually extend into this crotch curve area. And that's simply because the pant has a certain way of kind of covering this curved area of the buttock in this back crotch curve. You'll definitely learn more about this area of the pant in my Pant Fitting Foundations course that's gonna come out in 2024. I'm doing a small class in September this year and we're gonna open up to a little bit few more people next year after I sort of get some feedback and perhaps update it a bit. There's always work you need to do when you do uh, fitting classes. So those are the things I wanted you to note about the pattern at the outset so that you are familiar kind of with the things that I was paying attention to when I was doing the grading or the upsizing of this pattern from a size 12 to a size 16. Once you grade your pattern to the size that you need to be, I want you to make sure that you go and take a look at the body measurements that are needed for that particular size. This is going to give you information about what the body measurements are as in terms of what the pattern was designed for. And then when you go to measure the pattern, you're going to be able to compare those measurements to sort of figure out how much ease there is in certain parts of the pattern. So I always recommend that you definitely take a look at the body measurements, compare those to your body measurements, and also determine the original ease or what I call the designer's ease um, in the pattern in order so that you can actually assess how you want to apply that ease to your own personal body measurements. This is a really important part of fitting. Here you can see that this is my graded working pattern. So this is the pattern that I have graded two sizes up from the 12 to get a size 16. And from this pattern, what I've done is I've done my pattern adjustments to it. So I've made sure that I measured my body and then compared it to the measurements of the pattern. Now in order to determine the measurements of the pattern, you really do need to find your horizontal and vertical balance lines. Now if you need to find your vertical and horizontal balance lines on a pant or any other garment, I do have some tutorials that I've done previously that will help you find those balance lines. But in essence, you're going to find the balance lines on your front pattern piece first. In this case, it's the pant pattern piece that I'm using to start with. And then you're going to apply that to other areas of the pattern. When I'm making adjustments to a pattern, the first thing I'm doing is taking into account what my body measurements are and then comparing that to what the pattern measurement, body measurements are and the ease that's needed in specific areas of the pattern. So let's isolate the front pattern piece first and I'll kind of go through the pattern adjustments that I've done so that you can sort of get a clue as to how you can adjust the sewing pattern before you sew to get as close as possible to a great fit without even having to do a sample. Now I was lucky enough that my very first sample, I cut it in actual fabric and it turned out beautifully. I don't have a huge amount of fitting adjustments. I have mostly length adjustments and some contour adjustments. So it's fairly easy for me to determine what my pattern adjustments are going to be to be able to get a good fit on my very first sample. But you can see here, I actually did about 10 of them. So this is actually a really good indication of don't be sort of um, put off by the amount of adjustments that you need to make. It will really make a big difference to your garment when you actually sew it up. You already know if you have followed any of my videos before that we'll do length adjustments first, contour adjustments second, and width and girth adjustments last. We always do them in this order only because it makes it easier to make the decisions about what changes you need to make. You slowly and methodically change 
the pattern's size and shape to match your own without distorting the designer's intent on the style. So as I said, after I've graded the sewing pattern to my size, which is a 16, what I then did is I found my seam lines. So I made sure I marked in my seam lines knowing that this pattern has a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And it also usually marks the hem allowance. I often make the hem allowances wider because it always looks nicer. The next thing I'll do with the pattern is I will find my horizontal and vertical balance lines. Now on a pant pattern, it's easiest to find the vertical balance line first. And that's simply a matter of dividing the knee width and the hem width in half, finding their midpoints and extending a line straight up from that hem. So I will always have a hem and a vertical balance line first. I can then find my crotch level. Now the crotch level on the front pattern piece is always extending from the front crotch point. So the crotch level is perpendicular to that vertical balance line that you created and it is parallel to the hemline. Now the knee level on average is midway between the hem, which is usually the floor, to the crotch and usually the knee is set about two inches higher than that. If the knee level is not in the exact, exact position as originally intended, don't worry about it because you can alter your pattern for it to match your own. As long as you can find a knee level and sort of determine if it's the right level in terms of the shaping that you might find at the sides, it's a good idea to mark it in. You can always make adjustments later. The next level I'm gonna find is the hip level. And as you know, I mentioned earlier that the hip level marked on the pattern seemed a little bit low. So I just bumped it up a little bit and it just happened to be at the correct level for me after doing that. So those are sort of what I did. The waist level was already marked on the pattern. So I just simply marked that in perpendicular to the vertical balance line. Now, once you have these balance lines on the front pattern, you can definitely apply them to the back and you'll see that in a minute. So I wanted to show you the pattern adjustments that I did to the front pattern piece. And by the way, I always start with the front pattern piece first whenever I'm adjusting the pants part of the pattern, simply because I know that the front of a pant pattern is always drafted first. So this is the foundation for the back pattern as well. So starting here gives me a really good foundation for making alterations to the back as well. So you can see here, I changed the length of the pant by one inch. I changed the length of the pant above the knee by one and seven eighths. And I changed the length from hip to waist by half inch. Now these were determined entirely on my personal body measurements and the hem position that I wanted to have for this particular style. So for example, I know that when I measure from my floor to the knee on my body, that it measures 18 inches. I shortened it by one inch because I wanted the hemline to hang one inch shorter so I can wear a low heeled shoe with this jumpsuit. So I just had that in mind and of course I'm making notes as I go. The next thing I did was I changed the length between the knee and the crotch level because I wanted to accommodate the position of the crotch from the floor of my body. So I know that my crotch to floor measurement of my body is 29 and a half inches. So I made the measurement 28 inches. So that adjustment required me to remove one and seven eighths of an inch here between the knee and the crotch level. Now it just so happened that the position that I chose for the hip line, I did not have to make any change here between the crotch and the hip, but I did need to make a change here between the hip and the waist based on my body measurement. You can see here, I wanted it to measure seven and three quarters. So I had to remove a half inch here. Now those are all the all the changes that I made to the front pattern. But because I had this information about my front pattern and the changes I made, I can easily apply my length adjustments that I made to the front to the back. So this is what you're gonna see next. Here we have the back 
pattern piece now and you're going to see here that I've taken the information from the front pattern adjustments that I've made and I've actually made the same adjustments to the back. Now of course before I made those adjustments however I did make sure that I applied the same principles of finding the horizontal and vertical balance lines. So once again whenever you are finding your vertical balance line, you're just gonna find the midway point between the knee and the hem distance. So in other words, midpoint here, and you're gonna draw that vertical balance line straight up through to the waist. Once you have that, you can definitely find the crotch level and the knee level simply by walking your side seam line and finding those positions at the side on your front and transferring it to the back. And then you're just drawing lines that are perpendicular to your vertical balance lines in order to find your crotch, knee, and, and knee level. You will also find the base of your wedge level, which is the hip line marking on the front. So you're gonna transfer the hip line from the front here and draw a perpendicular line to the vertical balance line that is gonna be the base of the wedge. Now this is not necessarily the actual hip line because a wedge is incorporated into a pant pattern in order to accommodate the curvature that you have at the bottom of your bum. So basically the curvature from your hip line through to the back crotch point is length that you need in order to go through the prominence of your buttocks in that area. So that is what the wedge is accommodating. The thigh, as you know, is going to be something that you can mark from the front of your pattern as well. You're going to notice that the thigh is not perpendicular to the vertical balance line. And that's simply because in most pant patterns, this distance between the knee and the back crotch point is usually shorter than the front. And that is to accommodate a little bit of less excess fabric under your butt cheek, which often many of you complain about. Now you're gonna notice here, I've done some other pattern work that is more related to the back contour shaping of this back crotch curve. And what I've done here is I have slashed my pattern along the crotch line and I've shifted it out toward the out seam. Now what this action actually does, it creates more negative space in the crotch curve void here and it also leaves more extension for your back crotch curve. I find on me that this really helps to straighten out any funny diagonal drag lines that I get that are pointing toward the inner, so inner part of my thigh. And I think this is because I've got a quite a thin outer thigh, meaning I've, it slopes really, really close to my bone structure here, but I've got more inner thigh at the back here. So shifting this over by three eighths of an inch usually straightens out the hang of the pant so, so well. So I'm actually shifting this pant, this pant leg toward the uh, inner leg, which is automatically shifting this out. Again, you'll see I've had to redraw my vertical balance line compared to the original one here in order to accommodate that shift. Now I've done one other thing which has really helped me get the back crotch curve length that I need and that is I have taken this section of the pant pattern and shifted it down by 3 eighths of an inch. Now this accommodates a little bit lower buttocks hang at the back so I'm shifting it down which has made this shorter than the front by about three eighths of an inch. Now here's a look at the total crotch curve length and you're going to make sure that you are keeping track of what this measurement is. You can see here that I've actually recorded what the front rise is, which I'm considering the measurement from the waist to the front crotch point, and what the back rise is, which is the measurement from the waist to the back crotch point. I'm adding those together to get my total crotch curve length, and that's giving me 28 and an eighth of an inches. Now I know that my body, my comfortable body, um, total crotch curve length is about 28 inches. So that's how I knew that this crotch curve length was gonna work for me. It's also how I knew that I could reduce a half inch here and, 
add 3 eighths of an inch to this length here by shifting this down. So I'm actually looking at the measurements and assessing how it compares to my body, how much ease that I might need, if any, and kind of determining what's going to be working best for me. So this is how I'm making the decisions about if this is going to be working for me right out of the gate or if I'm going to have to actually make a muslin. Since it's measuring so close to what I normally use for this measurement, I feel confident moving forward with the sample without, without actually making a sample, actually cutting it in the actual fabric. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is you want to make sure that when you set your inseams together for the front and back, please make sure that you have a really nice smooth transition through this area. I often see pattern work that there are peaks or valleys in this area. It will always interfere with your fitting of this particular area of the pan. Make sure that you double check this. Another thing that you want to uh, just be aware of is that you'll notice that because I shifted this down by that three eighths of an inch. My back inseam is shorter than the front inseam to the knee by three eighths of an inch, which is absolutely fine. But it's something that you need to double check to make sure that it's not more than one inch. Usually if it's one inch, it's a very tight thigh, very fitted pant. Anywhere from zero to one inch is acceptable. Anything over that is kind of not working. You definitely want your back inseam length to be shorter than your front inseam length in this area of the pant. You do not want to reverse that. Once I complete the pant pattern, I'm going to move on to the bodice part of this jumpsuit. Now, when I work with bodices, I'm always working with the back pattern piece first because this part of the pattern is always drafted first. So you'll notice I'm always thinking about the origin of the pattern, how it's developed, and how I should approach my fitting decisions. So here you can see that I have made some adjustments here as well. I've reduced the bodice length by one and three quarters of an inch. Now, the reason I've done that is I have simply taken the information from the sewing pattern and I've taken a look at the body measurement that it's given me. So the back waist length of the size 16 is 16 and 3 quarters of an inch. So my body measurement is 15. So I know that when I compare those two, I have room to actually remove measurement from the center back neck to waist of the pattern by one and three quarters of an inch because I'm comparing my body measurement to the body measurement of the pattern. This way, I don't concern myself with the position of the back neck drop. I don't have to worry about that. And I also don't have to worry about removing measurement that's required for styling because the thing about this particular style is there is going to be blousing in the bodice that is going to allow this sort of blousing effect uh, when I'm wearing the garment. If I shorten it too much what's going to happen is that that length between the crotch and the shoulder area is going to be too short and it's going to become really uncomfortable. So I'm keeping in mind that there's styling associated with this center back neck to waist length. Well, when I determine that on the back, I can then make that same change on the front to make sure that I am making my side seams the same length and everything's gonna be all balanced out. I always, again, work in that order of length, contour, width, girth. And so the next set of adjustments that I looked at is what other adjustments do I need to do to the back pattern piece in order to make it fit me? Now I decided after this one and three quarter change that I wanted to add a quarter inch of a little bit of upper back contour shaping. Now of course this has made my back another quarter inch longer, but I decided that that's okay. It's no big deal. It's an extra quarter of an inch that's going to help me sort of make sure that this particular garment doesn't end up pulling toward the back of my body. I find that just this little amount of change here does make a difference in the comfort of the garment. This width adjustment that I did to the back bodice came a little bit later because I'm still gonna be working on my contour adjustment. So after I did my length adjustment here, I did this upper back contour shaping. The next thing I did was I worked on my cup size adjustment. 
Now this pattern is built for a B cup size body. So I needed to make a two inch cup size adjustment. So I consider myself a D bust cup size. Now this is different than any bust girth change because this is accommodating your bust prominence, which is a part of your bust girth, but it is also something that needs to come at only the front. So I made a one inch change here at the front for to accommodate a bust prominence of for a D cup. Now I did this a little bit in a non-traditional way. So you might notice here I have a slash line here going to this point, which is about the uh, level of the shoulder point here. And I've simply slashed and I spread my pattern here by one inch. Now I didn't want to create a dart. So you're going to see here that I have left this little wedge here. So this is the dart transfer area that would have been incorporated if I wanted to add a dart, but I didn't want a dart. I wanted to create a pleat instead at the waist seam. This worked out really beautifully, by the way, you'll see in a little bit. So I've slashed here and I've just pivoted this section over by one inch here. That one inch change required me to add about a half inch of extra length here to the center part of the bodice to be able to get that really nice smooth shape here at the bottom. So that cup size adjustment accommodated more girth. Now I went back here to change the shoulder width and the bust girth because Adding this measurement actually made the total measurement of the bust girth a little bit too large for me. So I decided that I would reduce the shoulder and the bust girth by three eighths of an inch on each the front and the back. So this actually reduced my entire circumference of the bodice by one and a half inches. So I made sure that I measured it back and made sure that I would still be accommodating my my cup size as well as the bust girth that I needed to accommodate. You can see here the ease here is six and a quarter inches which is absolutely beautiful for a garment like this which is kind of loose and flowing in the bodice. After I made those changes I simply went back and made sure that I adjusted all the seam lines made sure everything was working well. So this worked out really really beautifully and that is the total of the changes that I made. If you skip through any of this video, you may want to go back and review it again. I shared some really valuable tips on fitting a pant pattern. So trust me, there are gold nuggets in the process that I shared. Here's a look at the final results. Did you enjoy this video? If you'd like to see more like this, let me know. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, message me via email at alexandra at inhousepatterns.com or visit me on Instagram at inhousepatterns. When you comment, like, follow, and share on these platforms, you'll get more of what you love in your feed and help others to find the content too. Next week, I'll be sharing how I took this pattern and created the most comfortable pair of wide leg pants. I hope you'll tune in. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.